addressing a section of Ghanaians abroad, giving flimsy excuses as to why the Akufuado government discontinued the criminal trial of the infamous Chinese Galamse Queen Aisha Wine. This infamous Galamse Queen Aisha Wine has been at the center of many illegal mining activities in several parts of our country. Perhaps the worst Easter gifts the people of Ghana could have wished from the Akufuado government is this exact quote from our senior minister, a man firmly embedded in the kitchen cabinet of President Akufuado. Quote, we have a very good relationship with China. Today, the main company that is helping to develop the infrastructure system in Ghana is Sino Hydro, a Chinese company. With these kinds of, agree of arrangements, there are other things behind the scenes, the senior minister said. Again, he continued that putting that lady, Aisha Wine, in jail in Ghana is not going to solve our economic problems. It is not going to make you or me happy. That is not important, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, these were the exact words of the senior minister of the Republic of Ghana, Honorable Yao Safomamu. Our position is that to treat these comments by Mr. Yawasa Fomafo as a reckless act of indiscretion, as some have suggested, is to miss the critical point the highly placed cabinet minister and senior member of government sought to make. The platform and the context within which the senior minister spoke clearly shows that he was picking the mind of President Akufuado and his government relative to the discontinuance of the criminal trial of Aisha Wine. And here, let me expatiate on this point so that you appreciate the point we are making. The said event at which the senior minister spoke was not a private event. He was not having a private conversation with a friend. This was an official government platform. It was one of the town hall meetings organized by the government of Ghana as a means of interacting with the Ghanaian populace. So the platform was a gov an official government platform. And if you're listening to him very carefully, he rose to the podium in his official capacity as senior minister to answer a question for and on behalf of government. He spoke in his official capacity as senior minister and a key member of cabinet. And so what he said, though damning, though, you know, sacrilegious, were honest revelations of the inner thinking of the Kufuada government. He meant what he said. What he said was not a gaff, as some people would want us to believe. It can be reasonably deduced from the senior minister's comment that at the center of Ghana's bilateral trade relations with China is an obscene willingness on the part of the Kufuado government to condone plain criminality and the flagrant disregard of our laws, all in exchange for money. It is as if to say that a Sino-Hydro deal, a purely commercial transaction, is a free gift from China. Ladies and gentlemen, Ghanaians have every reason to be appalled and outraged 
by the honest revelations of Mr. Osafomafo, which reflects the inner thinking of the Akufuado government. These revelations we submit are disgraceful, reprehensible, and make a mockery of the foreign policy and the much touted Ghana Beyond Aid mantra of the Akufuado government. We are having a lot of movement. If we can have some, you know, order. Ladies and gentlemen, as for the subsequent effort by Mr. Osafomafu to rationalize the said disgraceful and insulting confessions, the least said about it, the better. The bullet has already gone, and it is too late in the day to stop it. From Mr. Osafomafu's revelations, it is clear that the Akufuado government wants Ghanaians to accept the fact that we let the notorious Galamse Queen Aisha wine of the Wook because we stand to benefit from a so-called butter deal with a Chinese company, Sino Hydro. It is therefore clear that to President Akufuado and his government, the flouting of our laws and the destruction of our environment do not matter. To them, Ghanaians involved in Galamse can rot in jail. Equipment can be banned. And many can be shot, maimed, and killed, as was suggested in Parliament by the MPP first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Joe Osewusu, some time ago. However, when it comes to Chinese nationals, they have the freedom and encouragement to engage in brazen impunity and get away with it, all because of the Sino-Hydro commercial transaction. Ladies and gentlemen, the decision of the Akufuado government to trade our laws, our environment, our resources, and our lives for the two billion Sino-Hydro deal which, by the way, is not even a grant, but a so-called butter arrangement in exchange of proceeds from our bauxite, is an insult to the sovereignty and dignity to, to us as a people. Let me take this point again, ladies and gentlemen. The decision of the Akufuado government to trade our laws, our environment, our resources, and our lives for the two billion Sino Hydro deal we submit is an insult to our sovereignty and dignity as a people. You see, Ghana is a sovereign country. And as a sovereign country, we have laws. And everybody in this country is supposed to abide by those laws. The law is not a respecter of persons. Article 17 of the 1992 Constitution is very clear. So in enforcing the law, there must not be any discrimination that because one is from China, he can get away with the, with the brazen impunity of violating our laws. But when it comes to Ghanaians, they can be shot and killed. They can be prosecuted and jailed, and so on. That Thinking is terribly offensive to our sovereignty as a people. It is an insult to our sensibilities as a people. And you see, this two billion Sino Hydro deal, this government has been celebrating as the best thing ever to have happened to Ghana, as we have already indicated, is not even a grant, but a commercial transaction. It is not free money. Sino Hydro is in Ghana to do business and to make profit. Over the weekend, we listened to the chairperson of the Media Coalition Against Illegal Mining, Mr. Kenashide, who explained the extent of damage 
that the activities of Chinese involved in illegal mining have done to our environment. According to him, it would take a whopping $38 billion to rehabilitate the land or to reclaim the land, our lands, and forest reserves, which have been destroyed by the activities of illegal miners, including Chinese. So even if the Sino-Hydro deal was a free gift, it will still not entitle the people of China or any foreign national for that matter to violate our laws and get away with it because we are a sovereign country. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, unlike the shameful and irresponsible Akufuado government, another African country, specifically Tanzania, recently prosecuted Yang Felan, a Chinese businesswoman nicknamed the Ivory Queen and sentenced her to 15 years imprisonment for smuggling hundreds of elephant tax. This is why we are not talking about gold, we are talking about elephant tax. This woman who has served as vice president of the China Africa Business Council of Tanzania since 1970 was prosecuted by the Tanzania authorities and jailed for 15 years. Unlike Ghana, Tanzania chose not to sacrifice their laws on the altar of their trade relations with China. Without any fear or equivocation, they cracked the whip on Yang Felan and sent a strong signal to the world that China is not ready to countenance the flouting of its laws by foreign nationals. We submit that by discontinuing the criminal trial of the Galamse Queen Aisha Uwai, Ghana lost a golden opportunity to deal decisively with the menace of illegal mining in a way that deters foreign nationals from flouting our laws. And ladies and gentlemen, on the screen, is a story filed by BBC, which captures what we just alluded to. The prosecution and the conviction of the Chinese Ivory Queen Yang Felan few, you know, uh, days ago. And so Tanzania, the Tanzania government clearly chose their laws and their environment they chose the preservation of their wildlife over and above their trade relations with China. Because yes, China is a good ally. and We respect our relationship with them. We thank them for their investments in Ghana and so on. But the Chinese government itself will agree with us that that is no, you know, that does not give the people of China the right to come into our country, destroy our water bodies with mercury and other mining chemicals, destroy our environment, our forest reserve, and so on, create problems for us, problems that we are struggling today to deal with, and get away with it. I'm not sure that the people of China themselves will be happy with that. And so President Akufuado and his government have a lot to learn from the Tanzania government. But ladies and gentlemen, does this mean that the mere fact that the Tanzania government prosecuted and convicted this ivory queen Yang Felan, China was going to severe their dealings, their trade dealings and investments in Tanzania? Emphatically, no. As a matter of fact, as you can see on the screen, and this is a story which was filed just six days ago, just a few, a few days ago, November 19, 2018, sorry. Here it says China aims to increase investments in Tanzania. This was after the conviction of Yang Felan. It hasn't stopped the Chinese from dealing with the people of Tanzania. So why does the Akufuado government think that the prosecution and the conviction of Aisha Wuwain would have in any way hampered our relationship with the people of China. It simply doesn't make sense. Ladies and gentlemen, 
it has to be emphasized that recent remarks by the Chinese ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency Mr. Shi Ting Wang, on the menace of illegal mining in Ghana, stand in sharp contrast to the condescending and despicable comments of Mr. Yao Osafomafu. Unlike our senior minister, His Excellency, the Chinese ambassador, acknowledged the devastating effects of illegal mining activities in our country and pledged China's readiness to help curb this canker. The ambassador further bemoaned the institutional failures that often aid some of these Chinese into our country in the first place, and the lack of communication between our authorities and the Chinese embassy in Accra when it comes to the repatriation of some of these persons. He therefore urged closer collaboration between the two countries in fighting illegal mining in Ghana. Certainly, the government of China and the Chinese ambassador to Ghana will not be enthused with a bad impression that Mr. Yao Osafo Malfo's disgraceful comments craze about the people of China. The ineluctable question is therefore why our senior minister would be telling the whole world that Ghana is ready to sell her birthright to China for a pittance? Why will government be inviting the world that come we are ready to be exploited and raped. How did we get here? And what wrong have we done to President Akufuado and his government? Now to Akufuado's deceptive and failed fight against Galamse. Distinguished friends from the media, the revelations by Mr. Osafomafo present us an opportunity to do a postmortem of President Akufuado's fight against illegal mining so far. Undoubtedly, the menace of illegal mining is the biggest threat to our environment and water security. This is what led the media coalition against illegal mining to declare a national war against the Kanka in 2017. President Akufuado supposedly bought into this agenda and assured the nation that he was going to put his presidency on the line in support of this effort. Pursuant to his pledge, he set up the Anti-Ministerial Committee against Illegal Mining and constituted the Operation Vanga Tax Force to wage a brutal war against illegal mining in all parts of the country so as to preserve our environment from further destruction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is worthy of note that owing to this fight, the Akufuado government banned legal small-scale mining for almost two years. Here we are not talking about Galamse. Galamse is illegal, and it cannot be banned because it is already illegal. We are talking about the ban of legal small-scale miners. Small-scale miners who are Ghanaians like you and I, who went through due process, followed the law, acquired concessions. As a result of that, some of them went to their bankers, procured loans, procured equipment for their mining activities, had their legitimate legal business banned for two years, all because of this fight. In the process, some Ghanaian small-scale miners were shot and killed at their duly licensed mining sites. Sure, the Kwabin, you know, incident where over five illegal, I mean, small scale miners were shot in a forest comes to mind readily. Several precious lives have been lost in the last two years, including, ladies and gentlemen, the sad and untimely death of a fine soldier, Major Maxwell Mahama, who left behind a very young family. Also, several small-scale miners have lost their lifetime investments and livelihoods, all as a result of this fight. 
Many have had their mining equipment destroyed through a selective and wicked implementation of the ban on small-scale mining. Also, many illegal miners have been arrested, prosecuted, and jailed. The country has expended millions of taxpayers' money on the activities of Operation Vanguard and the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Miners. Sadly, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we are today. The fight against illegal mining remains far from being won. As a matter of fact, it is in the final rounds of glaring defeat. The reason is obvious. The Akufuado government was never committed to it in the first place. And we will expatiate on this further. Ladies and gentlemen, recently, ACE investigative journalist Anazari Miyawanas released a video documentary entitled Galamsi Fraud, which exposed various corrupt and underhand dealings by leading officials of the Akufuado government associated with the Galamsi fight. One of such officials is Mr. Charles Bissou, the secretary of the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining and a presidential staffer. Mr. Bissou was caught on video receiving bribes and using his office to facilitate illegal mining activities in the country. He was caught on tape, I repeat, demanding and taking bribes, abusing his office, and abusing his fiduciary relationship with the people of this country. But not just him. Another MPP operative caught on the video was Mr. Andy Ogusu, an aide of the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the MPP, Mr. Antribu Esiako, a.k.a. Chairman Woon to me. From a Nazis Galamse fraud documentary, Andy operated as the main connection man and basically served as a bribe-taking conduit between Mr. Charles BCU and prospective illegal miners. Sadly, in spite of the overwhelming audio audiovisual evidence of the criminal acts of Charles BCU and Andy Owusu, no action, I repeat, no action, no action has been taken by President Ekufuado to punish them. Mr. Bissiu continues to walk a free man and even has the temerity to appear at state functions, much to the chagrin, chagrin of all Ghanaians across the world. This glaring inertia on the part of the Ekufuado government to punish Mr. Charles Bissiu and Andy Ozu for their crime it's not only ample testimony of President Ekufuado's lack of commitment against Galamse and corruption, but it is a monumental betrayal of our trust and mandate. Ladies and gentlemen, you see here, we are talking about a president who assured us that he was not going to countenance the activities of illegal mining. He promised us that he was going to put his presidency on the line. Today we have hard evidence, audiovisual evidence, which has captured no less a person than a presidential staffer who, doubles, who doubled as the secretary of the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining, taking bribes and actually promoting Galamse. Yet, President Ekufuado has not uttered a word about this scandal. He has not done anything about it. And these people are still walking the streets of Ghana as free men. Ladies and gentlemen, apart from these damning revelations, several actors within the Akufuado government have in one way or the other compromised the fight against Galamse while the president looks on unconcerned. It will be recalled that sometime in 2018, the Minister for Local Government 
Honorable Hejia Alima Mahama stated publicly that some MMDCs of this government were actively engaged in Galamse and indicated that she was going to do he was, she was going to publicly disclose their identities and sanction them. However, till date, we still don't know the identities of the said MMDCs the minister talked about and what President Ekufuado has done about this case. And I'm sure this matter comes to mind readily. And on the screen is a graphic publication to that effect, Ministry to Name and Sack MMDCs Engage in Galamse. So you come into office, you tell us that you will not countenance illegal mining, you constitute an interministerial committee against illegal mining, constitute Operation Vanguard, you spend millions of taxpayers' money on their operations. Only for your own minister of local government to tell us that your own MMDCs, this is not the NDC talking, this is Hegia Alima Mahama talking, Minister for Local Government. Your own MMDCs are engaged in Galamse. She told us that she was going to name and shame and sanction those involved. Till date, ladies and gentlemen, we still don't know the said MMDCs engaged in Galamse. President Ekufuado has done nothing about that. Nobody has been sanctioned. Nobody is being prosecuted and so on. Again, the former Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable John Peter Amiwu, also made a startling observation that members of the Operation Vanguard team had been compromised by illegal miners. His observations were later corroborated by the Eastern Regional Minister Honorable Eric Daffo. So ladies and gentlemen, on your screen, as we usually do, you know this is the moment of truth, so we like to give evidence to buttress every allegation we make. Is Peter Amiwu token. This was a report filed by Graphic Online, dated May 24, 2017. And it says, soldiers protecting Galamsey sites. This is according to Honorable Amiwu. And if you can move to the next one, you see that the Eastern Regional Minister also corroborated that. This is actually a story filed by my John Online. I don't know why that is not showing. But it says illegal miners are bribing Operation Vanguard team, according to the Eastern Regional Minister. So these pieces of evidence are coming from government, coming from government officials. They themselves have been telling us how their own people are compromising this fight and undermining our environment. And yet, President Ekufuado has done nothing about it. The latest one, of course, came from the Chief Executive Officer of the Forestry Commission, Mr. Kojo Uswe Fie, a.k.a. Sir John, who stated that, quote, certain higher-ups in this government were undermining the Galamsey fight and were actually aiding the return of illegal miners to plunder our forest, unquote. This came from Sir John, that there are big people in this Ekufuado government who are undermining our collective resolve to deal with the canker of Galamse. And that they are current, they've been aiding the return of illegal miners to plunder our forest. All these pieces of evidence pointed to the fact that the fight against illegal mining was heading in the wrong direction. Yet, President Ekufuado refused to investigate these reports and bring the culprits to book. Very characteristic of President Ekufuado, a man who talks much but delivers very little, the much touted fight against Galamse has turned out to be yet another example of an empty rhetoric. Today, the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining and Operation Vanguard have been turned into active vehicles for facilitating and promoting Galamse in this country. This has increased the spate of illegal mining 
and has intensified the degradation of our environment. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a fact. Water bodies which used to look yellowish in color when we were leaving office are today looking like chocolate. They are looking like brownish black because of the intense degradation of our environment. What we hear our president talk about, what we hear sometimes media men report, are just the empty rhetorics. But if you go on the ground, you realize that the activities of illegal miners are going up. And here, we are talking about illegal mining being done by foreign nationals. Because that is what the likes of Charles Bissu and Andy Ousu were doing. They take the duly acquired license concessions of Guineans and they give it to Chinese because according to them, Chinese are more human than Guineans. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, in conclusion, the fact that President Ekufuado's fight against Galamse has failed is no longer in dispute. The spectacular failure of the supposed anti-Galamse fight underscores what we all know to be the truth, that President Ekufuado's policies and offerings, most of the times, are instituted for self aggrandizement but are in reality an avenue for crooked members of his party and government to line their pockets through corrupt means. In the circumstances, the NDC demand that President Akufuado overhaul, overhauls the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining and urgently reveals his approach to the fight against illegal mining. This is the time for President Akufuado to rise above his sweet but hollow rhetorics and start to walk the talk. He must show genuine commitment and dedication to the fight against illegal mining. We charge him as a matter of urgency to weed out and bring to book all corrupt officials, starting with Mr. Charles Owusu, Charles Bissu, sorry, who have compromised and undermined our collective fight against illegal mining. With regards to Osafo Malfo's insulting and disgraceful comments, it is our view that the senior minister already communicated. Let me take that again. It is our view, ladies and gentlemen, that the senior minister only communicated the position of President Ekufuado and his government. And we have already articulated that. This is the reason government has so far not had the courage to denounce or contradict him. The Ekufuado government has amply demonstrated that like the biblical Esau, the interest of the people of Ghana matters little when it comes to instant gratification. Despite what he said about caring for the next generation more than the next election, all that matters to Akufuado is to obtain money at all costs so as to do some projects that they hope will help them to win election 2020. However, we know beyond a shadow of doubt that the Ghanaian people will punish President Ekufuado for this monumental betrayal of our trust and mandate.